Hi, um, this is Dr. Nurse Storms in my office at Bryn Mawr College. I am writing for you a little booklet on stereochemistry and doing stereochemistry in a more practical way. And I'm going to have a few videos to go along with this. So this one is called Stereochemistry 1. And in Stereochemistry 1, I'm just going to give you a general overview about stereochemistry of compounds that have one centers, one center in them. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. Okay, so what stereochemistry involves are, is a variety of things. It has to do with the spatial aspects of molecules. It deals with stereo isomers and um, stereoisomers are compounds that have the same connectivity but different spatial orientation. Um, what this stereochemistry one is going to deal with primarily are chiral molecules. And that's what I'm going to be talking about here, chirality. But you have learned a little tiny bit of stereochemistry if you learned anything about double bonds having cis and trans isomers. So for example, if I had this molecule, this should look familiar to you at this stage of the game, versus this molecule, okay, these molecules are stereo isomers. Specifically, they are geometric isomers, or the so-called cis-trans isomers. They can also be called, as you'll see later, they can also be called diastereomers. Okay? So this you've probably seen before, okay? These molecules are stereoisomers. Why are they stereoisomers? They have the same connectivity, okay? Connectivity, methyl group, carbon and double bond, carbon and double bond, methyl group, methyl group, carbon and double bond, carbon and double bond, methyl group. Same connectivity. They have the same IUPAC name. They're both two butenes, okay? But this compound, the two methyl groups are on the same side of the double bond, and this compound, they're on opposite sides of the double bond, if I split the molecule this way. So this one is called cis-2-butene, and this compound is called trans-2-butene. And there, there's more to this, and there'll probably be another video on this subject. Okay, there's a lot more to it, but you probably learned something about that in general chemistry. These molecules are different molecules. They can be put in different bottles. They can be physically separated from one another. They have different physical properties. Because this, the interconversion of this molecule to this molecule requires breaking bonds. In other words, we would have to break the H and methyl off and reconnect them the other way. And it has to do with the fact that the pi bond doesn't have free rotation. And that's something you should have learned already okay, in the course. So this is an area of stereochemistry. But the place we want to focus today, we want to be focused on chiral molecules, chirality. These molecules are not chiral molecules. And this is because chirality, or chiral molecules, or I'll say chirality, which is a property, it is a three-dimensional phenomenon. And we have chirality or something is chiral when 
the shape of the object or molecule is so irregular or asymmetric that it is non-superimposable. You can see I have a very messy board here. <laughs> Imposable on its mirror image. Okay. Glenn, how are we for time? Uh, six minutes. We're six minutes in? Yep. Okay. So, what we're going to be dealing with now is chirality. And again, if something is chiral, the shape of the object or molecule is so irregular or asymmetric that it is non-superimposable on its mirror image. And this, again, is a three-dimensional phenomenon. So we say molecules are chiral or they possess chirality. Now, to give you an example of an object that's chiral, hands, feet, okay? My feet are in my shoes, so it's not so obvious. But hands are chiral, okay? My right hand is chiral. My left hand is chiral. My right hand has such an irregular shape that it is non-superimposable on my left hand. That means it's non-congruent. It can't occupy the same space. So let me show you this. If I take my right hand and I take my thumbs and I superimpose my thumbs, my other fingers don't superimpose. If I take my pinkies and superimpose them, the rest of my fingers don't superimpose. If I, if I try to make these fingers occupy the same space, the rest don't superimpose. I can face them off against each other, but this is not superimposing. Superimposing would mean they'd have to be able to occupy exactly the same space. You will find this property with many objects in our world. Okay, Think about your feet. Think about the desks that are in the lecture rooms. There are a lot of irregular shapes in our world. Think about screws spiral staircases, the DNA helix, we could go on and on and on. There are certain shapes that are not superimposable on their mirror images. Okay? When, when this occurs, we say the object has handedness, just like our hands, and we notice when we have handedness that, it, that we end up in a situation where the shape in question has very specific requirements. So think about taking your hand and putting it in a glove. And I don't mean just any glove. Let's say you have a pair of leather gloves that are kind of well-shaped. You can't put your right hand into your left glove, correct? You can't put your left hand into your right glove. When you go to shake hands with somebody, right, it's a lot more comfortable to shake hands with their right hand than their left hand because you're handed. This hand has a very specific shape, and it only fits in very specific shapes, okay? Think about your feet going into shoes. Similar idea. I don't want to spend forever on that. Your textbook does a lot with that. Clem, how are we for time? Uh, eight and a half minutes. Okay, I'm just going to talk for like one more minute. So what we want to do is expand this concept of chirality into molecules. We want to look at molecules. So to begin this idea, we're just going to end with these two molecules that I made using a molecular model kit. And you're going to discover I'm not really into using models too much, but I use them occasionally. This molecule is chiral, like my hand. This molecule is chiral, like my hand. Okay? Why is it chiral? It is so irregularly shaped that it has, um, it, it's so irregularly shaped that it is non-superimposable on its mirror image. This molecule is the mirror image of this molecule. Okay, so let's test its superimposability. If I pick this up and I try to get the green to line up with the green and the orange to line up with, or the red to line up with the red, you will notice that the black is not congruent with the black. Okay? So you say, oh, I'll flip it over. Okay? So I flip it over. Purple and purple congruent, black and black congruent, but look what happens to the other sides. Now, what would happen, how would you superimpose these? You would have to take two bonds, break them, insert them the opposite way for them to become the same molecule. 
okay? So the mo these molecules are chiral. The definition of chirality is non-superimposable on the mirror image, okay? Why are they chiral? Where does this irregular shape come from? It comes from what we call an asymmetric atom, and in this case it's an asymmetric carbon. An asymmetric carbon is a carbon with four different groups on it, and I'm going to stop there and continue in the next film.